Hey coders, I'm here with a walkthrough today to show you how to integrate our Mailgun backend integration into a React frontend form. It's actually fairly simple and we'll spend more time working through some React TypeScript concepts and building a form and then connecting it via a fetch post route, fetch post request to our backend contact route. So we're gonna go ahead and dive right in here and get this walkthrough underway. Um, if you remember from the last video, which if you don't know where we are currently, make sure to watch the backend integration video as this route will begin to make sense more after watching that. Uh, this two portion right here must remain at that authorized recipient email that you register at Mailgun. And this from here on out, we can begin changing up. So this was the from right here, which will have to be an email from our front end um, form. So I'm actually gonna change this to a rec.body.email. And I'm gonna change this hard-coded string hello there from our subject to say rec.body.subject. And this will make the assumption that our front end must have, must send some kind of body that has an email, a subject, and a message in it. With that little refactor, that actually completes everything we're gonna to need to get done on the back end of our project. So that completes this here, and to keep my mind separated here, I always collapse the directory I'm no longer working in, just so I can keep things straight in my head of like, okay, now this is the front end, especially if some of your components have the same names as the routes in the back end. I might have a chirps.tsx and a chirps.ts on the back end, and sometimes it can get confusing jumping between the two. I mean, until you see the code, but trying to jump between file names can get kind of annoying in a large scale project. So moving on into our app here, it's the same one that comes with the bare bones template. It just has the container, some text, a piece of state, uh, this component will mount, and a couple other things. And we're pretty much just gonna start pretty fresh here. So I'm gonna remove the component will mount. Uh, we will have some state. I'm gonna remove the H1 and the H2 here. Props will stay the same. And I'm gonna refactor this piece of generic interface down here. So we're gonna say email is gonna be a string, just like we had said earlier. We're gonna have our subject, which will be a string. And then we're gonna have our message, which will be a string. And these pieces of state line up with what my request body needed to have for our route. And TypeScript is only telling me that I need to update my state object over here. So let's go ahead and do that before we forget. Email, we're gonna start it out at Let's start out as a blank string, and then we'll do our subject, blank string, and then our message as a blank string. There we go. Looking good so far. So now we're gonna go ahead and begin filling out some information here in our render method. We just have to bring up a pretty basic form as of right now, because I removed that hello world, we just have a blank page. We have a blank, uh, a blank plate to work from, right? Like a blank um, canvas to go from here. So I'm just gonna bring in some basic information on a form. Um, it's gonna have some bootstrap stuff on it. And I have a I have like one or two things in my SAS that customize this for me here. So we're gonna do a form group. We're gonna give it some margin from the top of the page, give it a border, give it a color of border primary. I want a rounded border. I want some padding on the form, some box shadow on it and a background color. Now I've actually, this is some typical stuff I like to do in my own projects because it gives it a little bit of bootstrap styling and really kind of customizes it and brings it to life. So we don't just have like raw HTML elements on the page. They don't look very nice. Then I'm gonna have to have a couple labels. I don't really care about that attribute for this example. We're gonna have a label that will be email. Then underneath our email label, I'll have my input. It'll be of type text. Its value, because this is a controlled input, must be tied to a piece of state that I'll be handling with an on change handler. And let's give it a class name here. And we'll do our input group. We'll give it some margin and a hair touch of padding. There we go. And it's gonna need to have our change handler. So in the lecture, and the walkthrough on how to use with React with on change events, you guys should know how this behaves. If not, here's a quick little rundown. You guys are used to using on change handlers all the time from your vanilla React projects, and we can actually do some inline arrow function binding. So we would do an event 
there would be an arrow function here that would set that piece of state that I want it to set, which in this case would be email, would be event.target.value. And we'll have to specify, thanks to TypeScript, um, it'll want to know what type of event this is, in which case it is a react.change event. And this allows us to safely define what event.target.value is. And that change event is going to happen on an HT, if I can spell, HTML input element. There we go. And there you go. That's the only little thing we have to worry about to make sure this on change handler is safely typed. We have context bound because we did an arrow function within our on change handler because I don't want to have to write three or four different method, class methods that are just changing an input is all. So with that little snippet there done, all we got to do is copy and paste that a few times. And I'm going to change this one to be subject. So it's tied to this.state.subject. And that's exactly what the piece of state I'm setting is, right? And there's IntelliSense helping us out since I have it wired up into our interface there. And the last one down here will be the message of whatever the email needs to be. This.state.message. And message needs to get changed down here as well. Cool. That should round it up about for those inputs. And now we have to put a button we can submit with on this form. So I'm going to give this little guy some style here, make it look a bit less boring. So we'll give it a button, a but bu him, button secondary. And it's going to say email me. There we go. And let's, oop, let's give it some margin away from the rest of the form inside that box. And we'll give the button itself a little bit of, a little bit of box shadow, make it pop a little bit. A little bit more. Okay, that should round out what we need on that. And the next big one here will be actually our on submit on this form here. I'm going to make an on submit handler instead of a button on click handler. But before I do that, I want to make sure my code here looks okay. All right, yeah, it looks pretty good. I mean, I'm not much of a designer, but uh, you know, it looks better than a boring plain form. So it looks kind of nice. As of right now, you can see it doesn't do anything, but if I do click this button, because it's a form submit, the default behavior for the page is to refresh, which is typically a no-no in React. The whole point of it is we can manipulate state to make things re-render on the fly instead of refreshing the entire page. So we're going to go ahead and add on that on change handler here. I'll go ahead and put that on a new line to make it easier to read. Not on change, my apologies. It'll be an on submit type event. And this one will have a class method on it. And instead of binding context in here, I'll use the class transform properties method, which is having an inline arrow function on the class method itself and not in the on change or on submit handler. So we're going to say this dot on submit will be our class method. If I can spell this on submit. OK, good. So this is where we're going to go ahead and do that, where we're going to say on submit is an arrow function a class method. And because we did the arrow function out here, it should go ahead and automatically bind context for us thanks to TypeScript. And this guy will receive an event as well. And to make sure we're t being safely typed here, it's going to be a react.change event from an HTML form element. There we go. And that's all we need to get up and running here. So the very first thing we need to do is an event.prevent default because we don't want that page to be refreshing anymore. And we're going to be making a fetch post request. So to make a post request, that's cause, it's going to be some kind of asynchronous action. We're going to be making a request to our own server, which should run fairly quickly, but still at some non-zero length of time. So I have to add this async keyword so I can unlock the await syntax rather than doing a promised chain. So I'm going to go ahead and wire up my try and catch block, unless I fat finger another hotkey there our try and catch block, and we're just going to throw the error if it occurs. Let's see, just handle it that way. And I'm going to do a fetch request, and the fetch is got promise, so I need to make sure I have the await keyword in front of it. And this guy takes two arguments. The first one is going to be the route or the REST API endpoint we are trying to make a request to, which will be API slash contact, which I got from looking at this right here, the, the endpoint I coded, and it's a post request. And the second argument in a fetch is going to be an object, which will be our configuration for the request itself. It has a method property on it. Thank you, IntelliSense there. 
which will be a post type request. And it's going to need some headers on it because we're going to need to specify the type of information we're sending to our server with the request. And it's going to be another object. So make sure you don't forget that second set of curly braces. And this is where we're going to type content type application JSON. And this is just informing um, this request to our server that this is going to have some uh, JSON information with it in the request payload or body. And this key and or property and value um, are just the syntax required for request headers. And if you're curious of how any of them are formatted, you can actually pull some of them from um, your requests in Postman. So earlier in the last demo, I actually made this a similar post request to my server. And I had this headers object right here, content type application JSON, which is where I'm pulling this information from along with the documentation online. So besides this headers object, we're not going to need any authorization. We don't need someone to be registered or logged in to send an email from this particular application. So we're not going to need to have any other headers on there. However, we are going to need some kind of request body, which is where our rec.body comes from on the back end. And I conveniently made it so, and we have to JSON stringify it. So I have to convert it from JavaScript to JSON, almost like packing it up so I can send it off. And I conveniently made my state object the exact same thing that my server is um, expecting, an email, a subject, and a message, all strings. So all I have to do is pass in this.state into my fetch requests as the body payload. And that should be just about it for what we need on this particular request. Um, I'll go ahead just for some good uh, user experience. I'm going to put in a, this dot set state where I'm going to empty those input fields so they go back to blank after I send an email. All right. I could just leave the information in there and redirect to a different page. That's another option. I could have some kind of alert box or a modal saying, thank you for contacting me pop up. Um, that's all advanced stuff that you guys can bring into your own applications to give them some personality and some a breath of life to them. But for this particular demo, I don't really care about that. We're just gonna reset those inputs back to blank and call it a day. So with all that coded, let's go back and make sure nothing's broken on my application. Um, refresh a couple times, Webpack's running, localhost 3000. I believe we're just about good to go. So this email, uh, let's just say it's from Luke at skywalker.com. The subject is indeed the force and the message is may it be with you. I'm gonna go ahead and click on this email button and keep my fingers crossed. Looks like the request was made. There's no errors in the console log. Um, yeah, it looks like it made the, the request successfully 200 okay post request everything looked good inputs emptied out and check it out this time I'm not going to bring my phone up to the camera but I have my inbox open and conveniently there it is uh, my email just got sent to me zero minutes ago at 9 19 p.m. and that's really about it what you need to do on the front end um, once again if you wanted to kind of like I demoed it in the back end of uh, this particular integration of Mailgun is we could absolutely take this particular fetch request and turn it into some kind of function that we can import into this file and reuse across our application if, say, we had a couple different contact forms for different purposes across the site. Um, I won't demo that in this particular video. I want to keep it nice and short and sweet since there's not a whole lot to show off that's Mailgun specific. I just want to show you guys how to integrate what we coded on the back end and bring it home on the front end. So that about wraps it up for this walkthrough. If you guys have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments or in the discussion below this video, and we'll be happy to answer. Other than that, I hope you'll have a great time sending out emails and getting contacts from your portfolio sites that have a contact form. Bye.